In this tutorial, I will show you how to create base meshes for sculpting using the skin modifier in Blender. And then after you create the sculpting base mesh, you can take that into Blender sculpt mode and you can sculpt your creature or character or whatever you're sculpting. And real quick before we start, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and also the YouTube membership. All right, so to start off, I'm going to press the A key to select everything, and then I'm going to press X, and we want to click on Delete. Always make sure you delete the default cube. So I'm now going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a plane. So I'm now going to press the Tab key to go into Edit Mode, and then I don't want four vertices, I just want one vertex in the very center. So I'm going to press the A key to select everything, and then I'm going to press the M key, and the M key is going to bring up the merge settings. Now I want to click on at center, and that is just going to merge them all together into the center, so we just have one vertex right there. So now we need to add some modifiers to get this to work. So let's click right over here on the modifier properties. Now because I'm going to be creating a basic character, I want to add the mirror modifier so that I can just add geometry for one side and it'll mirror it over to the other side. So if you're making any sort of character or creature or animal that is symmetrical, then you'll want to add the mirror modifier. So I'm going to click on add modifier. Let's go down here under generate and we're going to add the mirror modifier. So we can just model this side and it'll be mirrored over to the other side. Now this still doesn't have any thickness, so that is where the skin modifier comes in. So let's click on add modifier and under generate we are going to add the skin modifier. And you can see right now it basically just looks like a cube. So what it's doing is it's giving thickness to this vertex that we have right here. So it's giving it thickness all around and so it looks like a cube. So just press the A key to make sure that everything is selected and then you can press the E key key and the E key is going to extrude it. And then we're going to bring it up on the Z axis. So hit Z and we're going to bring that up. And then if I hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe, you can see there are two vertices here and then there is an edge in between them. And so it's basically creating this square around those edges. Now I don't want it to be a square shape, I want it to instead be round and smooth. So I'm going to hold the Z button down, go back into the solid view, and to make it smooth and round, I'm going to click on add modifier. We're going to add one more modifier, so under generate, we're going to add the subdivision surface modifier. And then right here, I'm going to turn the viewport and levels both up pretty high to like a three. Um, you don't have to turn it up that high if you don't want to, but I do want it to be pretty smooth. Now, if I tab to go back into object mode and then use the object context menu to shade it smooth, you can see it doesn't work. And that is because on the skin modifier, we need to go right here and click on shade smooth. So now the mesh is actually smooth. So I can press the tab key to go back into edit mode. And then I want the vertices which are in the very center to be merged together. So on the mirror modifier, we're also going to check mark the clipping button. So I can press the one on the numpad and that's going to take me to front view and I can now start to extrude this up and create the character. So I'm going to click down here and I can press E to extrude and that's going to extrude it out. Now I want to make the character's legs so what I can do is actually just click on the clipping to turn it off for now. Then I can press G to grab and I can kind of bring this out and then I can click on this button again to turn the clipping back on. And then I can press E to extrude and extrude that out. Now one problem with this is that it's kind of hard to see the actual vertices. If I hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe and let go, you can now see the vertices much better, but I don't want to be in wireframe. I want to hold down the Z button and go back into solid view. So what I can do to preview the vertices which are inside the mesh is I can go right up here and and click on this button. And this is the toggle x-ray. And the shortcut key is Alt Z. So you can press Alt Z and that's going to toggle between the x-ray. So now that that is on, you can see that we're able to actually see the solid preview of the mesh, but we can see those vertices inside there. And then you can just select vertices and press G to grab and that's going to move them around. Now, if you want to change the thickness value of the skin modifier, you can just select the vertices. So I'm just going to select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex, and this is the body or the torso. So I want to make it thicker. So to do that, you can press control A. So press control A when you have those vertices selected, and that is going to make it much thicker. So I can just make the body a bit thicker, and then I can kind of bring this down and make this for the legs. And then if you want to make it thinner, you can press again control A, and then move your mouse, and you can make it 
get thinner. So control A is going to make the skin modifier thinner or thicker. So I can continue to extrude this out to create some legs for the character. All right, and then I want to make some feet. So I'm going to press E to extrude, kind of bring that out, stick that right there. If you press control A, you can see that it's going to make it thicker all around. But if you want to make a certain part thicker on just one axis, you can do that. So I'm going to press the N key and the N key is going to bring up this side panel. And then you're just going to click right up here on the item. So right over here, you can see there is a radius X and there is a radius Y. So for instance, I want these feet to be a bit more flat, but a bit wider. So I can just change this. So I actually want to change the radius Y and I can just make that bigger and then select this vertex and turn the radius Y up. And you can see we now have feet which are more flat. So I'm going to navigate right back up here and do the rest of the body. So I'm just going to select this vertex and then I can press E to extrude bring that out. I want to make the chest a little bit bigger. So I'm going to press control A. Control A will change the size of that. I can also select this vertex, press control A and change the size of that. And if you're wondering what the little red dotted circle is, that is the root or the starting of the skin modifier. So if you want to change that, if you want to change where the starting or the root is of the skin modifier, you can just select one of these vertices. Like I can select this one right here. And then over here on the skin modifier, I can click on mark root. And then that is going to bring it down there. So I can click back here. I can press E to extrude and then control A, change the size of that to make the neck. E to extrude, that's a little bit too small, so I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select that one as well. Control A will change the size of that. I can select this one, let's make the head. So I'll press three on the numpad for side view. I can press E to extrude and then Control A, maybe bring that down a little bit, Control A again, and then E to extrude, and that's way too big, so control A and we can make that smaller. So as you can see, this method is really easy for quickly getting a character base mesh for sculpting. I'm also gonna click right here and then I'm gonna press N to open up the side panel and I'm going to change the radius Y, kind of bring that down so that the chest isn't going back and forth quite so much. And then let's select this vertex and I'll press the one on the numpad to go to the front view. I can press E to extrude and you can see it's not extruding out this way and that is again because we have the clipping turn on. So I'm just going to turn the clipping off, press G to grab and just kind of bring that out. And then I can click on the button again to turn the clipping on because in the center here, I want these to be merged together. But then if I'm extruding something out like these arms, I don't want them to be merged together. All right, let's press control A to change the size of this G to grab, kind of move it over control A. So we're just kind of making some shoulders and then E to extrude again, control A and then E to extrude again, bring out those arms. And of course, if you want to make them thinner or thicker on one of the axes, you can change the radius y and the radius x just by hitting the n key and then going right over here to item and then let's make some basic like mitten hands to sculpt with so e to extrude and then let's also change that so make the radius x smaller so that the palm is a bit thinner and then if you want to add a vertex right in here in between two vertices you can press Control r and then you can just click right there and that's going to place a vertex bring it over and then i can press e to extrude Control a that'll scale it down and if you're having something like this happen where it's having some glitches there are two main reasons for that one main reason is that these might just be too close close to each other. So you might just need to bring the vertices out so they're a bit farther away. And then another reason might just be the angle. So sometimes if the angle is kind of sharp, if the angle is really sharp, there can be some issues. So just kind of play around with the angle and kind of move it away a little bit if you need to. And I'm not trying to get the shape to be perfect. I am just making a sculpting base mesh, but then in sculpting, of course, you can play around with the shapes and refine it better. So there we go. As you can see, this method is really easy and I was very quickly able to create this stylized base mesh character. Character. So now let's set this up for sculpting. So if you want to sculpt this, you're going to need to apply all the modifiers so that it's actual geometry. Now, before you do that, I would recommend duplicating this and making a backup of it just in case you want to go back to it. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then just right click. So it hops back to its default position. And then what I can do is I can just press the H key and that is going to hide it or right over here in the outliner. If you go right here and open this up, you can see here's the backup. I can just like double click 
click on this and rename it to like backup. And then if I wanted to, I could just like create a new collection by clicking right here to create a new collection. And I could just rename this to like backup and I could just click on the backup and drag it and stick it into the backup collection. And I could also press Alt H so I can see it again and then just uncheck this collection and that'll hide it from our view. So we now just have a backup of this. So if we wanna go back to it, we can. So I'm just now going to select the main character and then we need to apply all these modifiers. So just hover your mouse over the modifier and then you can press Control A, Control A, and Control A, and that is going to apply those modifiers. So if I now press Tab to go into edit mode, you can see this is actual geometry now. Now I also wanna click on this button right here to turn off the toggle X-ray just because I don't wanna see through it. But there we go, we now have a very nice base mesh for sculpting. So then to sculpt this, you can just hop right over here to the Sculpting tab. All right, so I've jumped over to my display drawing tablet and I can now get started with the sculpting. And if you've never done sculpting in Blender before or you're a beginner to sculpting, then I will have some links in the video description to some beginner sculpting tutorials that I've created. So my sculpting with Blender for beginners tutorial, also my tutorial on how I set up Blender for sculpting, and I'll also have a link in the description to my sculpting tutorial playlist if you'd like to watch some more of my sculpting tutorials. And if you're interested in purchasing a drawing tablet for sculpting, then I will also have some Amazon links in the video description to some drawing tablets that I recommend, and those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you purchase something through those links, that will help me out, but with no extra cost to you. All right, so I'm just setting up the layout kind of how I like. I'm just going to minimize these here, and I'm also going to turn on the Dine Topo right here. And I'm just going to turn the Dine Topo size to like a three, and then I also want the sculpting to be mirrored over on both sides. So I'm going to click on this button right here. This is the X symmetry. I'm also going to click right here and I want to change the matte cap and I really like using this matte cap right here this red one so I can just start to sculpt this and I can define the shapes better of the character all right and there we go so I've just done a little bit of sculpting to this character and so as you can see using this method with the skin modifier to create base meshes you can very quickly get a nice base mesh for your character and then you can sculpt the character so that's going to be it for this video so I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching and as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to watch more of my sculpting tutorials, I will have the links in the description to some of my other sculpting tutorials. But I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.